Hi, so welcome back. Um, so in this lesson, 5.2 Venn diagrams. What we'll be doing in here is really building again on what we did in chapter four. Venn diagrams, just to remind you, is when we use two different circles, right, in order to graphically represent whether or not a proposition actually makes sense. Now those two circles in the proposition represent the two terms, the subject term and the predicate term. Now that was in chapter four. In chapter five, as in our last lesson in 5.1, we came to the, real, the, to the understanding that there's actually three different terms. The subject term, well, we, well actually we call it the major term, the minor term, and the middle term. Really the major term and the minor term are just the, basically the predicate of the conclusion and the subject of the conclusion. So we can talk about, we can reconstruct Venn diagrams actually using three circles this time and representing an S for the subject term or the major, I'm sorry, the minor term, the P for the predicate term or the major term, and the M for the middle term. Let me give you an example. Let's use our same example used in 5.1. We had an AA1, right? In the A, AA1 in terms of this was the mood and this is the figure. Now, in order to graphically represent this, we're going to just draw a normal Venn diagram as we would normally. Right? Sorry, my circles aren't too good. Here's our S and our P, right? our major term and our minor term. But we're going to draw one more circle on top of that. Right? And we can put an M up here, which designates the idea of the middle term, right? Okay, so let's think about how we would draw this, right? And one, there's a few tricks here, and definitely read your chapter, which will explain it in greater detail than I have a chance to on the video. So the, the A, the first proposition is that all men are mortal, right? So maybe it would help if we put it up here. All M or T, right? All persons named Socrates, are men or humans, therefore all persons named Socrates right, are mortal. Right? That's the argument. So, it, and there's two things I guess you should say here is remember we only diagram the premises. And basically look, it's just like another Venn diagram. We'll diagram the premises and see if we can read off the conclusion. If we can't read off the conclusion or rather the conclusion is indeterminate from whatever the diagram shows, then it's invalid. So a valid argument will be one in which the conclusion will be clearly expressed in the diagram. Okay, so all M or T, right? So here, right, maybe instead of putting S and P here, it'd be helpful if I put uh, S and T, just to keep it clear. So I say all the M's are T's, right? What that means is that I go like draw this in. Right? So this is not there. Remember, if we fill it in, it's not actually there, or it's actually empty. Right? So all of the M's are actually part of the T's. The second, the second premise says that all of the S's right, are actually M's. Right? So we would draw it like this. All of the S's are M's, right? And this, the, so all we're left with is this middle quadrant. Now the question is whether or not our conclusion all S or T actually can be read off of that, right? So in this case, we say all of the S's are actually in the T class, right? You can see it, they're right here, which means they're in here, and they can't be anywhere else, which means this argument is valid. So you can actually, in lesson 5.1, I gave you a list of all the unconditionally valid arguments, and they'll always work like this, right? And if you want, go ahead and try to test and give Venn diagrams for all those arguments. Um, but this is how it works. Let's try one more example here, just to give you a sense of it. The AA, the AAA one, rather easy argument, right? Let's try one that's a little harder. Let's try an O I O one, right? Just so you give a sense, that's going to look like some S are not P. Can you read that? I'm sorry. Let me move it over here. an OIO1, right? And this is what it's going to look like. Some S are not P. Right? Some S are M. Therefore, conclusion, some S are not P, right? Now, first thing you notice about this argument is because we're dealing in particular conclusions, we're not going to be graying anything out. In fact, we'll only be marking 
X's, right? This is essentially how, um, if you remember our, our Venn diagrams before, this is how it worked in that case. Right, so let's draw our three circles. Right, and here we have our S and our P. And then we have our upper circle, which is our M. Right, okay, so you can see that. So the question there is first off, where are we going to put our X's, right? So let's look at this one. Some of the S's are not P's, right? So where do you put it here? Do you put it inside the quadrant? No, because we actually don't know whether or not it actually fits. Um, let's see, hold on, do I have this right? Oh, no I don't. This should say some M are not P. That's what I was concluding, so sorry about that little error on my part, right? So this says some, so then the question is some M are not P, right? So we have some M's, there's going to be X somewhere in the circle, but they're not P's. So the question is, where do they go? Do we put it in here? Well, ultimately, we actually don't know whether or not those M's that are not P's are actually S's too. Right? So it's actually we don't know what the, whether or not they count as S's or not. So in order to demonstrate our uncertainty there, we just put it on the line. Right? So we put our first X right there, just on the line. And so what this X tells us is that definitely there are some M's that are not P's, but we don't know whether or not they're actually S's or not. Okay? So then the next one is that some of the S's are M's. Right? So some S are M's, so we know there has to be another X in here. But the question is, where do we put it? Do we put it um, here, or do we put it over here? Well, in the same sense as our first X, we don't know whether or not some of the S's that are M's are also included in the P class, which means we have to represent that uncertainty or what we don't know there. So we actually just put it right here on the line, right? So this says, so this says that there are some S's that are M's, but we actually don't know whether or not they're P's, right? So then the question is whether or not we can read off our conclusion in this diagram, right? We can't put any more marks on. Those are the two marks we give. Some S's are not P, right? Can we read that argument from right? is actually invalid, right? Because we can't prove with certainty that some of the S's are not P's because we have one right there and that may actually be a P. We don't know. So what we really say in this, this argument forms invalid because the conclusion is undetermined logically. We can't determine the conclusion not from the diagram. So therefore it's an invalid argument form. Let's do an E, A, O, three, right? E, right? That seems simple. We just, right, we, we shade in our little in-between space here. What looks like a football, no F or T. And then the next, next premise says that all of the F's are actually C's, right? So it looks like this, right? So we go like this, we draw it in, right? Okay, so then the next question is, um, so obviously this is to say some C or not T, we don't see that in the diagram, so we know from the get-go that it's not, it's not unconditionally valid. But can it be conditionally valid? So here's what we will do is, we'll, so we can take the Aristotelian perspective and go back to premise two, right? Premise two that says that all of the F's are C's. Which means, if you remember, that means that actually we can put an X with the circle in here, right? Because if we take Aristotle's perspective, that means that they're, that when we say that all the F's are C's, there's at least one F that actually exists. And we can place that right here. So now the question is, can we read the conclusion from this diagram? And I think we can, right? It says some C's, and we see at least one C, are not T, and it's not in the T circle, right? So in this case, we say it's valid, but it's conditionally valid. Right? So we, what we have here is a conditionally valid argument. So you can use Venn diagrams, including the existential marker, to represent um, conditionally valid arguments. And this is how you do it. Now, there's a lot more examples, and I'm sure you're going to have questions. So what you need to do is uh, just read the chapter. Read the chapter closely, because it's going to go over a number of different cases, so you can get a sense of it. Um, and then try your homework, and then when you get your solutions from your from your, your homework solution, see which ones you got wrong. And if you have questions, post them, okay? 
Um, okay, talk to you later.